what's up guys today we're going to be going over how to control a servo with your raspberry pi so the first thing that we're actually going to need to do is hook up power so we're going to be hooking up to the five volts you can either use two and four because either, both of them are actually five volt pins and also a ground so that's going to be six and you also need a gpio pin to actually output a uh yeah, output the data to the actual servo so it knows where to actually rotate to you can use any gpio pin as long as you reflect that inside of your code and not only that uh, but sometimes if you have a server that's too big you are going to want to power it off of something else besides the Raspberry Pi just something to keep in mind uh, now GPIO actually stands for general purpose input and output and also uh, we're going to be going over PWM a little bit and uh, pretty much pulse width modulation that's actually the communication that we're having with the servo to actually have it rotate and these are uh, uh, modules that we're actually going to be plugging in to actually utilize it inside of our code we're using Python today so um, GPIO commands uh, you guys can actually pause this and read this if you guys want to go more in detail uh, and actually want to uh, make your own code yeah this will be beneficial to you to actually explain what we're actually doing inside of our code today all right this is the print that we're actually going to be using and uh, this is a hundred microfarad capacitor inside of here just something to keep in mind and also the yellow uh, wire coming out of the servo is going to be the white inside of uh, my servo and most servos but you have to read the specific information for your servo so first we're actually importing rpi.gpio and actually just renaming it gpio that way we don't have to actually type uh, more than we have to and we're also importing time because uh, yeah, Python doesn't have this by default all right right here you can actually see that we're doing GPIO dot set mode GPIO board and what this is actually doing is loading the actual pin configuration for the Raspberry Pi and that will make it so we could actually just use the number to correlate with the pin so right now we're actually doing GPIO setup pin 11 without the GPIO board uh, dot board uh, that wouldn't work properly and we're also setting uh, pin 11 as a GPIO dot out so that is actually going to be sending our PWM signal out to the actual servo so that's very important that we want th uh, that to be sending the information now the servo uh, we're actually making a variable here and we're making it equivalent to the GPIO dot PWM and we're setting the PWM for pin 11 and that's where, what the 11 is actually for and we're setting the frequency at 50 and that's what the 50 is for so now we're actually starting so uh, servo dot start zero and servo change duty cycle this is something that i'm still reading up on the change duty cycle but pretty much uh, i know that the values correspond to two percent yeah, like two is equivalent to zero degrees seven is 90 degrees 12 is uh 180 so if you put uh two that's zero if you put 12 that's 180 degrees so that's uh, how it'll correlate with the rotation of the servo and now we're doing time dot sleep a little different than other programming languages um and just because of the fact that we have to load our time module before we actually run the sleep command <clears throat> and you can see that we actually have servo uh and like uh, change duty cycle four so that's actually just going to be a different angle that we're actually going to be trying to get the servo to run at yeah oh, and uh, that's uh yeah like you saw there i had to fix the setup uh it was uppercase but uh, it's supposed to be lowercase So you can see we got a little movement there and you do have to run this as sudo because uh, to use the GPIO pens it uh, requires uh, administrative privileges. And you guys can play with this too. Uh, this is definitely uh, beneficial and if you don't end up running the sleep command what will happen is it just is too quick. It won't be able to move the servo at all. And uh, you can see from my video over here, ignore them blue pens, those are for a different 
um, or not blue pins, but the blue wires there. Those are for a different uh, project I've been working on. And I literally soldered them onto the <laughs> Raspberry Pi, so they're not coming off unless I want to unsolder them. And like I said, it, you can go the whole way up to 12. And this does change depending on the frequency. So if you increase the frequency or decrease the frequency past 50 or below 50, uh, it um, won't be 2 through 12. But uh, it seems to work very well um, out on uh, the frequency being 50 of the PWM. <clears throat> So, I, and also, you might be thinking, you can see we're going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's not smooth, even if you end up doing 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 through 12. Um, and I'll actually show you how you can make it smooth. Uh, I already wrote this command, and like I said, the code uh, will have it inside of a GitHub that you guys can actually take a look at if you are interested in. And you can see it running through its paces here. So now this is the other code that I was telling you about for actual, actually a smooth operation. The other thing that we actually had to import the module that we had to import was uh, called num, uh, numpy, uh, N-U-M-P-Y. And pretty much what we can actually do is make a uh, one number reflect a different number. And these are good for all kinds of mathematical uh, formulas. But you can see that what we're actually doing is mapping a value to correlate in between 0 and 179 for the actual angle. And actually map that to a representative number of 2 in between 2 and 12. And uh, this is actually the previous command, so Berdinix servo.py. So this is going to be the new one that we're running now. And you can actually see it's going to count through every degree of z or, uh, 0 and 179, or 1 and 180, you know what I mean? So, and it's at, this will make it a smooth operation the whole way through. And you can see this is a cheap servo. Um, as, so it's a little fidgety, but it's still working uh, pretty well. Yeah, very good for most opera like applications that you'd want to use it for. And uh, this can also be uh, used for other applications, like for a steering mechanism for uh, like an RC car or something like that. And that's something that I've been uh, thinking about doing <clears throat> and uh, I just wanted to show you what I might make a video on in the future because I ended up making this work where you can control the servo with a uh, Bluetooth connection to the Pi and uh, it works pretty well yeah so you could just manipulate the analog stick to turn like uh, say for instance a uh, RC card so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did, like the video. If you didn't, dislike the video. And thanks for watching. Peace.